Coffee at Jeff Baseball is on the air. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Kokomo Municipal Stadium, Lafayette Jefferson Broncos on the road for a North Central Conference tilt here at Municipal Stadium, home of the uh, Kokomo Jackrabbits of the Pioneer Pioneer League. My side, Chris Walker. And, Chris, beautiful day for baseball. And, hey, we've been here before, but what a facility. Very nice facility. Great day to play some baseball. Let's have some fun. And uh, this thing has been built up. They got number one going for Kokomo and Kyle Wade, and we've got our number one going in, in uh, Chandler Ferguson. So we'll, we'll have to see what happens. Two right-handers. Beautiful day for baseball, probably in the mid-50s. mid, mid 50s, Probably going to cool down later on in the evening. But, uh, hey, after that banner, this is a Reds fan talking now, Chris, but after that banner being raised in Wrigley Field, it's uh, it's time to play some baseball here, full full tilt. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm ready, Sweet Lou. It is baseball time. Of course, Chris, uh, keeping, uh, keeping the airways busy with uh, – Well, we're ready for baseball here. Stepping into the batter's box, ready to face right-hander Kyle Wade is Justin Walker. And like I said, this game's been built up. Number one, number one versus number one here. North Central Conference, big game. Of course, the sectional will be here later next month. There's a swing and a miss. This game's underway as Walker swings and misses. Of course, Justin playing shortstop, leadoff batter for the Broncos of Lafayette, Jeff. Here's the next pitch. That's outside. Oh, oh wow. Delayed call. <laughs> Speaking of umpires, behind the plate, Mr. Brad Sellers, and on the bases, Mr. Tom Walters. So, well, Chris in a hole, 0-2. Oh if he's going to get that call, I mean, it's going to be a hole, rough night. The pitch outside, 1-2. and two. I think he looked up here. Your son looked up here and gave <laughs> you a little wink there, uh, Dad. <laughs> One ball and two strikes. Got to protect that outside corner. They're going back over there. Kyle Wade winds and delivers. Foul ball off to the left and out of play. Of course, I mentioned Municipal Stadium here, home of the uh, Kokomo Jackrabbits. They'll be starting their third season. It's a wood bat league that uh, the Lafayette Jeff Aviators became a part of. They'll be starting their second season. There's a swing and a miss. It looks like Wade may have taken something off his fastball there. That was a nice breaking ball by Kyle Wade for strike three. So we've got one up, one down, and that'll bring up uh, JT Williams batting right-handed against Kyle Wade. There's a swung on and missed. Kyle Wade is the quarterback of the football team, pitcher here for the baseball team. Really big, big body, big, strong kid. 0-1 pitch coming. Here it is. In there, inside corner for cold strike two. I'd say Mr. Sellers has got to just hope he's <laughs> consistent on the other side too. Yeah, it's a wide pitch. zone today. There's a fly ball. Down the right field line, giving chase, and that's foul by about 10 feet down the right field line. Good job of JT Williams for taking the plate there. Of course, I had, uh, you know, I am, had quite a bit of baseball on. I had the Indianapolis Indians on my big screen on a computer. Boy, they went went 11 innings uh, and lost one to nothing. And then, of course, we watched the banner go up out. They just did it right up there at Wrigley Field. They just they just did it right. That was a really cool ceremony, Lou. Little really cool. Pop-up caught by the second baseman, Barberry, for the second out here in the top of the first inning. JT, looks like he got that maybe off the end of the bat. A little humpback line drive where the Sean Barberry was able to come in and make the play for the second out of the inning. Two up, two down. And that'll bring up the second baseman, Clay Bowman. First pitch swinging to the third baseman, 
Muncie over to first base, and the Broncos go quickly here in the first inning. We've played a half an inning here from Municipal Stadium, home of the Jackrabbits at Kokomo. No score. Of course, the Wildcats will be uh, headed over to Loeb Stadium tomorrow, weather permitting. I, th I think there's a, just a slight chance. Of course, to finish the schedule, uh, we'll have a makeup game Friday at Loeb Stadium against the Berries of Logan Sport. That game's at 6 o'clock. And then Saturday, again, weather permitting, the Broncos will head down 231 south to take on North Montgomery. Interesting week of baseball, Sweet Lou. Four or five games. Got to get off on the right track today. Hopefully Chandler Ferguson can bring his A game, keep these Kokomo Wildcats off the base pass and keep them from scoring runs. Broncos come in. Five wins, one loss, and two ties. Kokomo's only, uh, I don't know. No, they've only been able to play two games. They played a doubleheader Saturday here against uh, South Bend. I think it was, was it Riley? South Bend South Riley, Bend Riley. Yes, sir. They swept the doubleheader against uh, South Bend. So, well, got a few scouts yeah, there. I Apparently saw down here behind home plate. Not, I don't think we had as many as we had at Loeb Stadium the other day, Chris. But no, I think there's seven or eight. I saw them down in the bullpen area when Chandler was warming up. See what he brings today. Well, my Reds doing quite well at Pittsburgh. We'll see what happens. The bullpen was absolutely magnificent last night, and. Uh, We'll see what they do tonight. Of course, the Cubs, again, they're going to have the day off today. And then big night tomorrow night at Wrigley Field. They, it's a ring ceremony, isn't it? What they say, 108 diamonds uh -huh. on there? Shoot your hand. You'll be <laughs> flinching down we'll like that on one side or the other, whatever, uh, whatever side. It'd be hard to lift, though, thing, man. So we're ready to go here in the bottom of the first inning. Chandler Ferguson is going to face the center fielder, Nate Hemorich, a left-handed batter. First pitch from Ferguson Ooh. just outside. And Sweet Lou, that must be down because he was given that that far out in the first top half of the first, yeah. so that must be down. Get a pitch outside. Oh, yeah, he did call a strike here. Well, all I can say is early uh, – Early wow. observation, he's going to be consistent, but she, he's got a wide zone tonight. It is definitely a wide. Ground ball foul down the left field line, out of play. That ball was just foul. He just missed a double right there, Sweet Lou, even though Riley Potts is fairly close to the line. Well, Chris, going from I'm, – I I'm, don't know how many times you did it. Obviously, probably not very many, but adjustment here for the infielders, and even, even the whole team going from grass to – Artificial surface. There's a good curveball. I think we're called or a swing and a miss as Hemorrhage goes down swinging. But I mean, what what can you do here going from from grass to? I mean, obviously get as many uh, hits from the coaches to to uh, get the bounce. And yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things where as a player, I think an infielder you really like it because you you know you're going to get a true hop on a ground ball. Um, the thing is, is, the speed of the ball, it's going to get up, get on you faster. Outfielders, you have to understand that if that ball hits in front of you, you got to know how, how bouncy the turf is because all turfs play a little bit differently. So it's very important to, you know, take pregame infield outfield seriously because, you know, there's going to be a situation in the game where you're going to get a hop where, you're not, where you weren't expecting it or you're not used to. Right, Almost right back to you. I heard you hollering over there at Purdue on Sunday. You had a couple <laughs> headed your way. You I did. Glad the net was there. The net was right there, similar to this one, but the, the one over at Purdue covers the top of your head as well. This is a beautiful facility. One ball, two strikes. There's a ball down low and away. It gets past Christian Ferguson. Of course, nobody on base. So, You know, Sweetie, those are the ones. I know there's no one on base. Um, I'd like to see Christian even on those still drop and block because if that – if if Cole Muncy swings at that, I mean that's a drop to third strike, and you want you want to work on work on dropping the block, and it, it, it's not going to hurt you to work on it. 
one two pitch. Good pitch. Swung on and missed. Two strikeouts in a row for Chandler. Breaking ball really looked sharp today so far early in the game. The Kokomo Wildcats aren't seeing it very well. Well, that'll bring up Noah Herlock, the shortstop, batting right handed. There, Chandler shaking off a pitch there. He doesn't do that very often. Didn't like it now at all. Now he stepped off. Yeah. Yep, now he steps off. Now he winds and delivers. There's a swing and a miss. Breaking ball. He's. I think sometimes Chandler gets in that run and he throws a lot of breaking balls. He feels really confident in it. And when it's early in the game and it's breaking like this, I understand why. Another one. That's two in a row to Herlock. And Herlock does not know where that ball is coming from and where it's going to end up. 0-2. Oh well, let's see what he does here. My guess he's not even going to waste any time. He's going to go right back to it. Ooh, fastball. Just outside, yep. Just outside for a ball. One and two. Base is empty. Two outs here. Bottom of the first inning. No score. I'm certain it's coming here, sweet Lou. Noah Herlock's got to know the game. Noah Curveball's coming. There it is. And he missed Swung it. Swung on and missed. And Ferguson strikes out the side here to begin the ball game. So, pretty impressive so far here in the first inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. And after one, we'll take a short audio break. You're watching Bronco Baseball here on the web. Sweet Lou, Jeff Lizadder back here at Municipal Stadium, Kokomo, Broncos and the Wildcats here battling it out in North Central Conference play. And up to bat, face Kyle Wade is his counterpart, Chandler Ferguson. And Chandler first pitch swinging down the left field line foul. And we had mentioned even down to Tennessee, but except for the Logosport game, this guy's been on fire. Yes, he has. Chandler is a, a free swinger, and I think and to be successful, to, to hit with a high average and get a lot of hits in high school baseball, you have to be a free swinger. You can't give the umpires a chance to, to ring you up. Herlock at shortstop makes the play. One up, one down. Hard hip ground ball. And that will bring up third baseman, Riley Potts, of course. Riley with a no-hitter on Saturday against the Huntington North Vikings. We're real excited about the, this young man coming back after Tommy John surgery. He's looking really good. Here's the pitch to him, and he hits a ball into right field. Perkins over toward the line. He's got it. Not a bad idea by Riley. Goes after the first pitch, gets a fastball. Just got under a little bit. Lazy fly ball to Jack Perkins in right field for the second out of the inning. But back to your point, Potts has been his three starts. I mean, I've seen two of them, and I've been extremely impressed with his first two, well, with two of the starts that I saw. And, and uh, it's that's a really bright spot for us going forward. Well, two up, two down brings up 
Jay Siegel, the right fielder, first pitch swinging. A major league pop-up. Yes, it is. Muncie at third base. Now he's called off by Herlock at shortstop. and He makes the catch. So we're headed to the bottom of the second inning. No score. Now, just an observation here, Chris. Maybe it's been a pattern with us. Maybe – Coach McTaggart's got a scouting report, but we're not messing around. We're going after that first pitch. Is that just because somebody's saying, hey, he, uh, you know, Wade's throwing a fastball, first pitch, go get it? Or, Well, I, I think in a situation like this, I mean, Kokomo, Kokomo's going to have really three premier arms. I mean, I think they consider Kyle Wade their number one, but like I said before, they have two pitchers, Jack Perkins, who is a top-notch arm who's committed to Louisville, then Baden Root, who my guess may throw against us tomorrow, is committed to South Carolina in the SEC conference. So they have three premier arms. Those kind of guys, you don't want to wait till too deep in the count to see their secondary and their tertiary stuff. I mean, if you can get a fastball that you can see early in the count, I think it's smart to go after that because once they get you down the hole, it's going to be a tough battle to get out of that hole. I don't know. I'd said it before. Of course, it's been a... 40 years since I played, but I was always a patient guy. And of course, the pitching wasn't as good as it is now. <laughs> Especially with all, you know, most pitchers have got two, three pitches that they normally throw, but usually just fastball and curve, and you were most of the time just guessing. But uh, I just never wanted to, I wanted a good look at it just to prepare for my second and third pitches. But this game's changed a little bit, so. Well, that's why I think it's so important, Sweet Lou, when you're on deck and in the hole and in the dugout, um, it's very important to pay attention to the game. I mean, you should not, unless you're the leadoff hitter, you should not be surprised when you step in the batter's box. If you're paying attention, you should know what's going on. You should have your timing down and all that kind of good stuff so you can step in ready to hit. Well, Chandler Ferguson, ready to face three, four, or four, five, and six hitters here for the Wildcats. I was There's a called strike to right fielder Jack Perkins. Another breaking ball. I was here early enough where I saw a lot of Kokomo's batting practice. And Jack Perkins and Baden Root were really hitting the ball well. There's a base hit into center field. And as they say, there goes the no-hitter as Perkins. Hard ground ball up the middle into center field. And our first base runner. Jack Perkins gets, looks like he gets a fastball there, and he just takes it kind of a few steps to the second base side of the shortstop up the middle for a base hit. So now we have a runner on base, no one out. Here's There's your double play ball. There's a five. Very nicely four, done. Riley Potts. Three double play, and that, that looked like it was uh, made to perfection there. Those guys have been working on that. So it. Five four three double play, as they say, pitcher's best friend. Yes, it is. I don't I don't care what variety it comes in, but when you can get two outs and one swing in the bat, that is a pitcher's best friend. Good job, good pitch execution by Ferguson. Very nicely turned there by Riley Potts and Clay Bowman. Two outs. Des designated hitter, Baden Root, right hander. First pitch swinging, and that's I don't think I heard anything. I may have been swung on and missed, and then it just was. missed by uh by right, Christian Sanders. You're correct. We've got the window open here. Beautiful. Uh, I'm telling you, if I get recarnated, I want to. I want to do this for a living. This is a <laughs> great place to watch a ball game. Yes, it is. No balls and two strikes now. Ferguson ahead. See what he does with Root here. He better, oh and two and two outs. He's better location. He goes that curveball again. That last curveball was kind of hanging up on the inside corner of Baden Root. And like I said, the BP he took today, I think that's the only pitch he's going to be able to deposit out of the park left field. So if he keeps it away, he'll be okay. Wind up in the pitch. Good pitch. The curveball hits the outside corner for yep. called strike three. And that's strikeout number four in two innings here for Chandler Ferguson. We've played two complete innings here for Kokomo. No score between the Wildcats and the Lafayette Jefferson Broncos.
again, we uh, talk about the Jackrabbits. They'll be starting their third season. And the same builder that built this stadium will be building one right at Loeb Stadium. Uh, word has it that it's been delayed for a year and it will not start until August of 2018, which will be after the Colt World Series in August, a year from this coming August, and then we should, uh, I don't know the exact completion date. I know these guys had had some issues with the federal government over here regarding drainage and all that good stuff that they had to work out, and there was some delay. But uh, Tell you what, they delayed it just long enough to where they did it right. It, it is beautiful. It is. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Sweet Lou, isn't this where the sectional is going to be hosted this year? Hey, you're exactly right. I yep. think that's a great choice. Well, great choice. Uh, James Robinson was in here earlier, and there are some college teams that played has played some games here early. And, uh, of course, I m uh, mentioned something to the coach on the way. I know from their athletic director at Kokomo, they're, they're getting new uh, artificial surface on their football and getting a new track. Wow. So the band and, and uh, of course, they'll be able to come out and practice on their uh, football field for baseball. So this stuff's good for about a, about 10 years, and then it's replaced. But, boy, it's sure nice to have around. Yes, it is. Well, here's Christian Sanders, the catcher, and he swings and misses at the first pitch he sees from Kyle Wade. Christian's got to really shorten up that swing, a really long swing. It's going to be difficult to get to the pitches of, of Kyle Wade with, a, with that long swing. Seven, eight, nine hitters for Jeff here in the top of the third. And there's a called strike. And we're going to have to wait on the right hand there. Of play no down kidding. Because he just. I think that was a silent a, strike. Yeah, the ball hits a catcher's glove and he goes 1,000, 1,002. And then if the strike, he's getting the right hand out there. Pitch down low for a ball. It's a good job back there by Josiah Bolton. That's the situation I was talking about earlier for, for Christian Sanders. Even when there's no one on base, I know it's a one and two situation, so it's extremely important. You have to have instill that confidence in your pitcher that they can throw that breaking ball with two strikes in the dirt and feel that you're going to block it and be able to pick the ball up and throw him out at first base. Really good job by Josiah Bolton there. Of course, a ball in the dirt's a little bit different on an artificial surface than it would be at, you know, like at Loeb Stadium. That's right. Nice there's piece a ground of ball and there's a base Christian. hit in the center field. For Christian Sanders, so Sanders gets the first hit for the Broncos, and we even even the hits now with the Wildcats of Kokomo. Good job there by Christian. Again, a breaking ball that he waited on, and he just kind of drove it back through the middle. Good job by Christian. Get him on base, and the even better thing is he's the catcher, so we get that courtesy runner on there, so we get some, get some speed out there. Is that? Uh, That's looks like Clay Jones. Clay Jones. Okay, we got courtesy runner, Clay Jones. Running at first base. First time that uh, Kyle Waits went from the stretch position. Brings up the first baseman, Nick Newell, batting left-handed. So if he can pull one, he's got a nice big hole on the right-hand side. It's just a huge outfield out there. Squares the bunt, takes outside. There's a throw down to first, and Jones is back. We need to make this hurt, Sweet Lou. Find a way to get Clay Jones over to second base and take our chances with Nico Martin and Justin Walker. We have to find a way to get a run here. Give Chandler a little confidence going back to the mound. Well, the way this is, I mean, a lot of times they build up a game and pitchers and it never does end, ends uh -huh. up that way. But this looking looks like it may it may do that. Oh, no kidding. So far, so good. Here's a called strike to Ewell. Evens a count, one ball, one strike. Nobody out. Runner on first base for Jeff here in the top of the third. There's no score. Nick's got to get the job done here. He's asked to get this sacrifice down. He need, really needs to get it down. Now Wade comes set. Here's the pitch. Here's a bunt attempt. Uh -oh. And did it too That's hard. A play. And there's a double play. As that bunt put down with Yule went right back to Wade. He needed to get, uh, get that more toward third. It's not right back at the pitcher, so. Wow, this seems a lot like the inning before, the half inning before. You get a man on base, and then he's erased with a double play. A little different variety here. You had the 1-6-3 this time. Yep. But, again, it was not very good execution by Nick Ewell. I mean, it, it's tough to bunt and get that bunt down, but 
you cannot in that situation bunt it right back to the pitcher, especially a pitcher with a good arm like Kyle Wade and is a good athlete because Kyle Wade is normally their shortstop, I believe, when he doesn't pitch. Well, artificial surface, you really got to – the pitch high and away to Nico Martin, the center fielder, to the number nine batter in the Lafayette Jeff batting order. Get Martin on here. He's got plenty of speed. Wind up in the pitch. And hits the outside corner for a called strike. He one is ball, calling that, that pitch there. And it, it's just unhittable. I mean, it, and guys, I, and I, folks out there, I hate to sound like this, but it just frustrates the heck out of me to see. I mean, some what some of these high school hitters have to go through, you, you just can't reach it. And if you're, if you're a good, disciplined hitter, you're going to end up being in a hole because you take that like you're supposed to, but it's called a strike. Yeah. One ball, two strikes, two outs on Nico Martin. Wade winds and delivers. It's outside. The catcher oh. thought that was strike three, and so did. Uh, if if that would have been called a strike, I'm telling you. I mean, that, that ball was in the right-handed batter's box. Yep. It really was. And they both wanted it. And what, what scares me about that is <laughs> he's going to get that call. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed by Martin. He goes down swinging. So we play two and a half here. No score. Each team with a hit. We'll see how that situation develops, Chris, because that, uh, you know, as long as, long as he's consistent. But like you said, that pitch is so far outside that it's unhittable. You, you know, can't hit it. it's it's interesting. I was one to watch Coach McTaggart walk back and see if he would say anything to the umpire, but it's it's really a catch twenty two. I mean, do you put a plug in the umpire's ear to try to help your hitters? But what you don't want to do is make the umpire mad and not give that same call to your pitcher. So I think this is one of those situations where if you're Scott McTaggart, the head coach, you just kind of go with the flow. <laughs> you just kind of stay quiet and let uh, let the things play out as they may. But it, but it's going to be a tough day for hitters, and it. And it appears to be much more so for the left-handed hitters. He's given a lot of outside corner to left-handed hitters right now. Well, I did some umpiring in my day, and I, you know, always wanted to, um, always wanted to, you know, get get batters to swing. But uh, not not uh, something like that, and not you know, the bottom line, not get it so they're unable to able to hit the ball. Exactly. I want them to get up there and swing. To let them know those pitches, and we'll wait and see what happens. I see what Justin does, you know, because I think your son's a smart enough hitter. If he knows that that pitch is coming, he may go the other way with it. We'll see. Yeah, and and that of course that's the approach. But the problem is, I just don't know if you can reach that. You know, if you get all the <laughs> way on top of the plate, and then if you're a smart pitcher, then you bust a man, and that one's right down the middle, and he, Chandler doesn't get the call. Yep. Well, seven, eight, nine hitters. Perry. Mc McCollum, number 15, the left fielder. It's a ground ball. There's Justin at second base, and he gets pulled off. Uh, I think he, I think he just beat it. He kind of hit it off the end of the bat, and uh, he's he's hustling down that baseline, and he, he just he just beat it. Yep, we're going to get there. He's going to be credited with a hit. So, base hit, leadoff man for the Wildcats. That'll bring up how you pronounce that? Quamil Belt. Quamil, Quamil, yeah. Mm -hmm. Quamil Belt, the first baseman. Batting left handed. Runner on first, throw to first. Close play over there. Callum back safely. Challenge got really quick feet, which gives him a really good pickoff move. One ball, no strikes. Pitch outside, and that's off the glove. <sighs> Of belt or uh, off the glove of Sanders and into scoring position goes Belt. There's going to be a pass ball, wouldn't you think? Pass ball is going to be charged to Christian Sanders. That ball just, it was a little bit outside, but it wasn't like it was a wild pitch or anything. It was just, I don't know whether he, Christian was thinking about the runner or what, but. Anyway, McCollum now in scoring position. Pitch. 
pitch outside for a cold strike. Wow. <laughs> Evens the count, one ball, one strike. And I'm telling you, even even for the other side, I mean, that Camille Bell, Camille Bell the left-handed hitter, that pitch that he just called a strike on him, that was not even close. you got to give these kids a chance at the plate. One ball, one strike. Bunt attempt, and that's a good Let one. Let it go no. foul. Good job. Christian picks it up, and it goes foul. Looks like it had a lot of English on it, and it spun around over towards the uh, – Right-handed batter's batter's box. It did, Sweet Lou. Kamal Bell it looked like it was going to be a good bunt, but when it hit the turf, it had so much English on it, it went in foul territory. And good job by Christian Sanders by letting that ball bounce because with Camille Bell running, you're going to have time to throw him out. Christian lets it bounce and it goes foul. So good, good decision by Christian Sanders. Camille Bell's got to find a way to pull this ball to get his runner over to third base. Now one ball, two strikes. They called a balk. They just – Called a balk Whoa. on Chandler Ferguson, and McCallum goes over to third base. I don't know what the. So McCallum now over at third base on the balk. So infielders, all... infielders thought they were going to come in, and Coach Terry said no. We don't want to come in, so he's he's going to concede the run here. There's a line drive, and Good that's going to be caught. Oh, and he's not Siegel. tagging up, and he's not tagging up. Wow. Boy, the Broncos just got a break as a well-hit ball off the bat of belt to right field, and Jay Siegel catches up with it, makes the catch. So a break for the Broncos as Siegel makes the catch out in right field. Holds the runner, McCallum, at third base. Chandler Ferguson had Camille Belt way out in front on that, but Camille Belt is able to keep his bat in the zone long enough, and he hits a rocket out to deep right field. I mean, well, I mean, medium depth, but it's plenty deep enough to score. But Perry McCallum with a terrible base running play, he, he did not tag up. So now we have a runner on third with one out, and now the infield does come in. So good decision by Coach McTaggart. Deshaun Barberry, second baseman, swings and misses. Tell you what, Sweet Lou, this is a good opportunity for a suicide squeeze. No balls, one strike. Yep. Ferguson now steps off. We had a number nine hitter, Barberry, for for the Wildcats, and we get a strike out here and hold this runner. 0-1 pitch, Ferguson down low. Must be low. We have a special guest that just stepped in the booth. Sweet Lou, Sean Smith, a pitcher at Peru, and I see Sean just dominated a team not too long ago. I saw reading on PBR a lot Sweet of strikeouts Lou. I saw. Played for played for my our team, our Indiana Prospects team uh, this summer. Nice pitch by Chandler. Looks like he took something off. One ball, two strikes now on Deshaun Barberry. Yeah, Sean Smith, Justin Walker, my son, and Riley Potts all played together this summer. Now, uh, we've got Christian moving the infield or outfield in a little bit. They think they're too deep. There's a swing and a miss. Uh -oh. Oh, they're going to no, throw to third no. base. And, yep, I, I agree with you. It may have missed out. I'm surprised Coach McTaggart hasn't come out because that ball didn't look like it hit the batter in the batter's box. But here's here's the deal. On that play, Christian did everything right until he made it throw to third base. He saw it. The runner at third uh, scared him a little bit, but Christian, he was not far enough off the base. Christian could have turned through, thrown the first, gotten the out, and then Nick Ewell can throw back to home to get the out there or keep the runner at third base. Now we're seeing a situation where it's first and third with one out. The only good thing about this is a ground ball double play helps you out, but Nate Hemrick, the leadoff man, can run. Oh. Throw to second base. Oh. Oh, he may be. And a wild sequence here as Barberry was stealing second base. The throw was cut off by Justin Walker. He threw to home. Threw or go, Through, yep. And then it was 
or no, he wasn't throwing to home. He ended up throwing, or yeah, he did throw to home and ended up throwing back to third, and it got past Potts. So McCallum scores. We're going to credit uh, Barberry with a stolen base. And then we're going to get. It's so being E6. E6 on McCallum. Allows. Yeah, E6 on McCallum going home. Barberry now at third base. On the, went on the same air. Now they got Throw a it. rundown. At oh, third base, it. and Christian Sanders tags that out hits. Barberry, so he's out for the second out. So the pitch was <laughs> made, see? and Barberry, I'm not sure, he got caught out in no man's land between third and home. And Christian Sanders threw it to Potts. Potts threw it back to Sanders, and he made the tag. It was a suicide squeeze attempt, and it looked like Hemrick missed it. and the, Or maybe even a safety squeeze there, I'm sorry. And, and your base runner... Got a little bit too far off, got a little too anxious, and we were able to get, get him out there. So two balls, one strike to the leadoff batter, Nate Hemorich, center fielder. Count now three and one. Ferguson winds and delivers. That's low ball four. So Hemorich now on at first base. There, there are two outs, one run in. Kokomo leads by a score, one to nothing, and breaks up Colt Muncy, the third baseman. So we need Ferguson to uh, get in focus here. There's two outs. There's a pitch in the inside corner for a called strike. Chris, you got to make sure you're squeezing that ball there, Sweet Lou. This game's gotten a little ugly real quick. We got to get to get a wrap on this thing, get back to playing good, uh, sound defense, and then try to get back in the dugout and score some runs. Well, Coach McTaggart went out to the mound, and I'm sure he had, he didn't let any of the players do any talking. He did all the talking. Yeah, I'm sure. Of course, I hate to bring it up, but it reminds me of game four, Tennessee, where we just kind of oh. threw the ball all over the plate, had some mental errors. So. Don't bring that up. <laughs> The only good thing, it ended up, did not end up in a loss, but no balls and two strikes now on Muncie. Now Chandler taking a little bit too much time. Yes, they are. They're, I think they're rattling. They're getting in Chandler's head a little bit. Well, the coach, coach talked about that at Tennessee in a couple of meetings. There's a ground ball. Potts nice at third Potsy. base boy. over to first for the out. But the damage is done as the Wildcats of Kokomo come up with one run at the end of the end of three full innings here from Municipal Stadium in Kokomo. Sweet Lou Jeff Luzatter. Along with Chris Walker. It's Kokomo one, Lafayette Jeff zero. We'll take a short audio break. You're watching Bronco Baseball.
Sweet Lou Jeff Lusader back here at Medicinal Stadium as we head into the top of the fourth inning. Broncos trailing the Kokomo Wildcats by a score of one to nothing. Justin Walker, leadoff batter for Jeff. Get, see if we can get him on base, get something started. There's a pitch on the outside corner from Kyle Wade for a called <laughs> strike. That outside corner has not changed. He's giving it to him. And Kyle Wade is a smart enough pitcher. He's going to continue to hit it. Wind up in the pitch. Pop up down the right field line, giving chase as the third baseman, but that's foul as the third baseman, Muncie. There's quite a bit uh, of room here in foul territory. Of course, the uh, the bullpen. Of course, wanted to mention it was kind of interesting, Chris. Last night they uh, they showed the uh, where the new bullpens are at Wrigley Field, and mm -hmm. boy, unless you really have some binoculars to look in there, I don't know whether Pat's going to have to look in <laughs> to see if anybody's warming up at all for the Cubs or the other team for that matter. Pitch outside, just outside. You know, it's one of those things. It is outside, but we've seen him call that today, man. It, it's it's a tough day. See if he goes back to that fastball on the outside corner. One ball, two strikes. Kyle Wade winds and delivers just outside. And again, the catcher. And Wade's questioning the plate umpire. Yep. And he says when it you was get, outside. When you get so used to getting that ball that's – Six inches outside, I mean, I guess you like it. Need Justin to get a ball in the gap here. Two balls, two strikes. Swung on and missed. So one up, one down here in the first inning. Bring up JT Williams, the left fielder. Got to put the ball in play. Well, in the seven-inning game, the way you're going, we talked about it before, you're going to get about three chances That's right. to get to this guy. We're only trailing one to nothing. There's a swing and a miss. And you said it from the outset, this this is a big game both, both for both teams. Yes, we, it we is. Know, uh, Two number ones. There's a foul ball off to the right now to play. Williams in a hole, 0 and 2. But uh, Chris mentioned earlier the 2017 uh, sectional will be played here in late May. Of course, a home and home series. Kokomo will come to Logue Stadium tomorrow. There's a pitch up high for a ball. We basically have Potts as our number, our number two, mm -hmm. and you mentioned about their number two, number two. So both both teams have two bona fide one and two pitchers. Swung on and missed the inside. Williams strikes out. Two up and two down. Brings up the second baseman Clay Bowman. Wind up in the pitch. There's a check swing. They go to the first baseman and first base umpire, and he says it was he went around. So Bowman, no balls, one strike, two outs. Base is empty here. We're in the top of the fourth. Kokomo leading by a score of one to nothing. Called strike. Wade is in a groove right now. He's getting whatever he wants over play. Good breaking ball, good fastball. He is completely in control right now. You got that right. Wind up in the pitch. There's a ground ball. Herlock at shortstop over to first base. And the Broncos go quietly here. One, two, three here in the top of the fourth inning. Kokomo. One run, two hits, no errors. Jeff, no runs, one hit, one error. Kokomo will be sending up their three, four, and five hitters to face Chandler Ferguson. Of course, 
Municipal Gymnasium is just across, across the street here in center field where the Wildcats play their high school basketball games. And also in that building, the University of Indiana at Kokomo, or it's all called IU Kokomo, and they're adding more. They're going to add a, adding baseball here, not this this spring, but next spring they're going to have baseball. So they're, yes, they're they growing are. leaps and bounds. They've had girls and boys basketball it's just down the hallway from. In fact, I watched the uh, girls regional this year at 10 o'clock and 12:30, and they had a girls game and a boys college game down the hallway. And I went down there in between games. I'm not sure the uh, how many they can put in here, but of course there's no seats in the outfield. It's mostly just around uh, basically third base to first base. But I think I saw capacity is like 4,000 is 4, what they 000. list yeah. for here. But I'm guessing you can get with all the concourse area, all sidewalk area. I'm sure you can pile them in here if you need to. Well, we head into the bottom of the fourth inning Broncos trailing one to nothing as I mentioned three four and five hitters Noah Herlock the shortstop batting right-handed to face Chandler Ferguson he swings and misses as the first pitch Noah struck out in his first at bat and Chandler goes right back to the memory bank starts him off with a breaking ball and Noah does not like that Ferguson curveball wind up in the pitch Yes, Check he did. swing, and the play down Par City went around too far. Of course, our only loss was uh, a week ago today, as we lost two to nothing at Logan Sport. Riley Potts on the mound pitched a heck of a game, but just couldn't get any run support. And then, of course, uh, the next day the game was rained out, and will be made up this Friday. Pitch inside for a ball. Looked like Chandler tried to throw another breaking ball there, and it just kind of slipped out of his hand and stayed up. Two balls, two strikes now to Herlock. Foul ball off to the right. Of course, I mentioned the Jackrabbits play here. They play 60 games during the uh, during the summer months. 30 on the road and. 30th here at Municipal Stadium. Good pitch. Pitch on the outside corner for called strike three and gets Herlock looking. Come looking, surprising. I think Herlock is looking for a breaking ball there, and Chandler throws a hard fastball. It's a great pitch by Ferguson. Well, that brings up the cleanup batter, Jack Perkins, right fielder. Single to his first at bat. Wind up in the pitch. There's a curveball on the outside corner for a called strike. Chandler's got five strikeouts on a day. Well, I like him getting ahead of the hitter. I've always, I've been pitching myself. I always like getting ahead of the hitters. I think that would have been worth a check down to the first base umpire. I don't think Jack Perkins went, but it's still worth a check. One ball, one strike. A line drive into center field, but right at Nico Martin for out number two. So good wood on that ball from Perkins. He did. But he hit it right at Nico Martin and straight away center field. Yeah, it's a uh, little. You see Jack Perkins walk past him, ran past him out. I'm sure he sits on the Chandler. Jack Perkins, Chandler Ferguson, and Justin Walker played together in the fall as part of Team Indiana, so they all know each other. There's a called strike to Ferguson's counterpart, Kyle Wade, batting right-handed. Big, strong right-handed hitter. Hits that ball down the left field line, but it's way out of play. That's the one. Chandler's got to make sure if he's going to throw that breaking ball, especially now ahead in the count, he's got to stay on top of it. Don't leave it on the middle of the plate. 0-2 pitch. Here it comes. Ground ball off to the end of Bowman the bat. at second base. That, Good job. That ball hit off the end of the bat, and the Wildcats go quietly. So we've completed four innings of plays. This game is moving 
Yes, it is. Rapidly, rapidly. Kokomo leads the Jeff Broncos by a score of one to nothing. And we've got four innings in the book, three to go, and we haven't even played an hour yet. Starting to cool down a little bit here in Kokomo. Broncos will be sending up four, five, and six hitters here in the top of the fifth inning against right-hander Kyle Wade. Of course, the Broncos had handled the Wildcats the last few years. Got a nice ball club here in 2017. Yeah, I've talked about it quite a bit. Uh, this junior class for Kokomo is extremely talented, and for whatever reason, the last couple of years they have not won, and it hadn't matched kind of the talent that they had they possess. And uh, Kyle Wade just kind of took the bull by the horns today and said, "Give me the ball, coach. I'm going to throw us. I'm going to throw a great game. Keep us in this thing." And so far, he's done that. And he's one of those juniors. Well, four, five, and six hitters, as I mentioned, for the Broncos. Chandler Ferguson is going to be leading off. So see if Chandler can help himself here as we begin the top of the fifth inning. Kokomo leading by a score one to nothing. Chandler's been swinging a really hot bat. Ground out to shortstop his first at bat, but... Need Chandler to find his way on base here. Ground ball. I think he may do that. In the hole, deep throw. Not handled by Belt at first base. And we'll see what they uh, see what they score that. That's it. They, they gave him a hit. Give him a hit? Yep. All right. So a base hit, a leadoff hit to boot here in the top of the fifth inning. What happened was you had a hard ground ball hit in the hole. Um, Noah Herlight got there in time. A good strong throw, but he kind of one hop to a mile belt and he couldn't hold on to it. it gives Lafayette Jeff their second hit of the game. Again, we got, uh, looks like we got Jones again running, courtesy runner at first base. No, I think that Fred's is, in. that looks like Connor Hamilton. Hamilton, there. okay. Let's see. It gets off, I can tell. Yeah, that's Connor. Riley Potts ready to step into the batter's box. Riley's really good at hitting the ball the other opposite Throw field. Throw to first, and Hamilton back. I'd like to see Coach McTaggart maybe put him in motion, maybe a hit and run or something like that. I'd like to see Riley come up with a hit here, at least get a base hit, get that runner over to first base with nobody out. Absolutely. Here's the pitch, bunt attempt, and that's Ooh. to the right. It's the screen. Coach McTaggart not really happy. You can tell by the body language down there. <laughs> no balls, one strike, nobody out here in the top of the fifth. Broncos have a leadoff runner at first base. Stretch in the pitch. Swung on and missed by Potts, and he's now in the hole. No balls, two strikes. Jay Siegel, the right fielder, in the on-deck circle for Jeff. 0-2, Rye's got a battle here. Battle, find a way. Connor needs to get another step on that lead off to try to break up a double play, break up that force at second base. Pot swings and misses, and he goes down swinging for the first out. So Wade with a strikeout here. The runner on first base, one out here in the fifth. That will bring up the right fielder, Jay Siegel, batting right-handed. Decent lead over at first for Hamilton. He's getting off a little bit more over there now. The bunt attempt down the first baseline, and it is a good one. As Belt makes the play, and the Broncos – 
now have a runner in scoring position in Hamilton, so a good sacrifice by Jay Siegel. Well, I don't think you give him a sacrifice in that situation, Sweet Lou, with with um with don't an out so. all right now. You wouldn't okay. give him a sacrifice right. there. Um so it's a tough situation. I mean you give up an out to get a guy in scoring position and Christian Sanders, who's been who hadn't swung it all that great so far this year, but he does have one of the one of the two hits that we have in the game so far. So we need Christian to come up big here and pick us up. So no sacrifice. We do have Hamilton at second base, and it'll bring up Christian Sanders. Sanders with a base hit up the middle. First hit for the Broncos. And Christian to come up big here. I'd like to see him duplicate what he did the first time up the bat. Absolutely. Now Sanders steps out of the batter's box. Decent lead out at second for Hamilton, stretched by Wade. Here's the pitch. The foul ball, good swing, but off to the right, out of play. But he got, got good wood on that pitch. You're right on, sweet Lou. Christian's taking really good swing right there. Christian must be seeing the ball really well off of Kyle Wade. No balls, one strike, two outs here in the fifth. Stretch in the pitch, just Whew. low and away. It must have been low because it was there. And again, Wade asking the plate umpire where where it was. And it was just outside. You know, and it's what's interesting is, I mean, it really was off the plate, but he's been so generous with the other side of the plate, the other corner for left-handers. Kyle was expecting to get it for a righty as well. Oh, there's a pitch. It's high, high and inside. Two balls a strike now. Again, think, Hamilton on its second base for Jeff. I think Christian's sitting in a good spot here. you got to think fastball. 2-1 count here. I'm sitting dead red fastball. If he throws me to breaking ball, I just take it and I fight from there. But if I get the fastball, I'm going to get my barrel to it and hit it hard somewhere. Two balls a strike on Christian Sanders. Good lead it by Hamilton. Now Wade. Now time called by Sanders. Hamilton kind of bebopping around out there on second base trying to Upset the rhythm by the right-hander, Kyle Wade. Yeah, I think, I think Connor did get in Kyle Wade's head a little bit there, but Connor's got to be careful. He don't want to be in Christian's eyesight messing him up. Pitch down low for a ball, three balls and a strike. And that's exactly what Christian did. Christian got a 2-1 breaking ball there, and he just spit on it. I mean, and it was a low, so good thing is now you're sitting 3-1. And this is a situation you're absolutely looking dead red fastball. But knowing Kyle Wade, he's probably going to try to hit the outside corner. So look for something middle away that you can drive over to second base and set for a line drive base hit. Well, the outfield's a little bit shallow. If he can get in the gap, he could run for a while. There's a pitch on the outside corner for a called strike. And we're wow. run the gamut here. Christian Sanders now facing a 3-2 and two count. That was a 3-1 breaking ball by Kyle Wade. He's pitching today, folks. To be able to do that as a high school pitcher, have that much confidence in your ability, and Christian Sanders, the seven hitter, you're throwing 3-1 breaking ball. That's that's impressive. 3-2 pitch, two outs. Now Sanders steps out. The problem with that as a hitter is now you're really messed up because if he throws you a 3-1 breaking ball, that tells me he'll throw you a 3-2 breaking ball. But will, will Kyle Wade double up? Will he throw two curveballs in a row? Or will he go fastball hard in to try to freeze and tie Christian Sanders up? Well, we're going to find out what happens right here. 3-2 pitch, fastball. swung on and missed, and Sanders goes down swinging. Broncos leave a runner at second base. Opportunity goes awry. We played four and a half, and we got a good one here. Don't go away, everybody. Kokomo Wildcats one, and Lafayette Jeff zero. Kokomo will be sending their six, seven, and eight hitters. Up to bat, we'll take a short audio break. You're watching Bronco Baseball.
Sweet Lou Jeff Luzatter back here on the World Wide Web from Municipal Stadium in Kokomo. North Central Conference battle here between the Kokomo Wildcats and the Lafayette Jefferson Broncos. And through four and a half, Kokomo leading the Broncos by a score of one to nothing. Six, seven, and eight hitters for the Wildcats. Brandon Root, the designated hitter, steps into the batter's box to face right-hander Chandler Ferguson. Being Root, like I said, took a really impressive batting practice today. Chandler's going to make quality pitches. He looks like to me he's right on the plate, though. I he mean, is. He, he is right on the plate. If you can get that ball inside. And that's what Chandler's tried hands. to do right there, Sweet Lou. And I think Baton Root is smart because he's trying to take away that breaking ball. There's a ground, hard hit ground ball to the shortstop. Over to first. Nice recovery there by Justin Ferguson. One up, one down here in the bottom of the fifth. Yeah, Justin let that ball get in too deep on him, and it took, it took a hop. You got to feel that out front and run, work through the baseball. He kind of got handcuffed a little bit there, and it beat him up, and, but he was able to re recover and make a strong throw over to first base. One up, one down. That'll bring up Perry McCollum, the left fielder, right-handed batter. First pitch swinging, and he fouls back to the backstop. Boy, Mr. Belt is a big boy. <laughs> big boy. Yes, he is. Belt come, got that foul ball behind the plate. There's a swing and a miss. Chandler ahead, 0-2. We've got a dandy here. North Central Conference battle here from Municipal Stadium. One to nothing. Kokomo on top. Good There's pitch. a curveball. Hits the outside corner for called strike three. That breaking ball is nasty from Ferguson today. So quickly, two outs, and that will bring up Quimella Belt, the first baseman. I think that's seven strikeouts there for Chandler today, Sweet Lou. Quimella, if he could get a hold of one, he could hit a long way. Pitch on the outside corner for a called strike from Chandler Ferguson. Ferguson looks good, man. He's got a nice little pace about himself today. Pitch too far outside for a ball. Evens account count one and one. Of course, these two will be right back at each other tomorrow at Loeb Stadium. Game time, 6 o'clock. We'll have that game here on the web. 1-1 one, one pitch and just a little bit low. Wow. I think you're right, Sweet Lou. I think it was just a little bit low because as far as it was outside, I think he would have given that call if it was up some more. Two balls a strike. Good pitch. There's a called strike on the outside again. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. That breaking ball looks really good today. Now Ferguson with a 2-2. Ground ball right back to Chandler. Throws over to Nick Yule for the out. And the uh, Wildcats go quietly here. We've played five complete from Municipal Stadium here, home of the Kokomo Jackrabbits. It's a Kokomo Wildcats 1, Lafayette Jeff 0. We'll take a short audio break. You're watching Bronco Baseball here on the web. Sweet Lou Jeff Lusander back at Kokomo at Municipal Stadium. As 
we head into the top of the sixth inning. Broncos, two more chances here, trailing the Kokomo Wildcats by a score of one to nothing. Eight, nine, and one for Jeff. Nick Yule, a first baseman, batting left-handed. First pitch swinging, a pop-up in the infield. Now it's in foul territory. And the third baseman, Muncie, makes the catch for the Wildcats. One pitch, one out. Nick Yule went after the first fastball he saw. I think a lazy fly ball. The third baseman was able to put away for the first out of the inning. That's going to bring up a, a pinch hitter for, Bry uh, for Lafayette Jeff. It's going to be Bryce Marcus. Marcus now batting for Martin. Marcus batting right-handed. Broncos, Lafayette, Jeff just need a base runner here. Number nine hitter in the batting order. Now Kyle Wade winds and delivers. First pitch swinging, and that's hit right into center field. Backing is Hemorich, and again, first pitch swinging is Marcus, and he hits it on the numbers, but right at the center fielder. That ball's hit really well by Bryce Marcus. He's been... You know, it's the toughest thing to do, pinch hit late in the game in the game of baseball. He's sitting over the bench cold, and coach asked him to come in this situation and swing it, and he hit it hard. Now brings up the leadoff man, shortstop Justin Walker. Hits down low for a ball. We need to find, we need Justin to find a way, Sweet Lou, to get to second base. We need him to get to second base some kind of way. And take our chance to see if we can get him in from there. Look for a fastball here, something you can square up, try to hit in the gap. Now the left fielder is a little bit shallow, but both center and, and right field are playing pretty well squared away, possibly a little bit toward the right side. Let's see if Justin takes a pitch outside for a ball. Two balls, no strikes. Here's Two out, base is empty. Big pitch here coming to Justin. Yes, it is. Pitch on the outside for a cold strike. Wow. That's just, it's just not, it's not fair, man. You can't, you can't hit it. You just can't. There's nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do with it or nothing you can do about it. Two balls, one strike. Wade winds and delivers. Swing and a miss by Walker. Just to count two and two. Never saw, I've never seen him swing and miss so much. He's not. I don't know if he's seeing the ball really well today. Just doesn't look. He doesn't look comfortable in the pl at the plate. Just doesn't. Two and two. Here's the pitch. Ground ball foul down the right field line. Seems to be off balance quite a bit. Just does not look comfortable at the plate to me today. Count still two and two. The two outs on number two, Justin Walker. Broncos need a base runner. Yes, we do. Top of the sixth inning, one to nothing. There's a fly ball pretty well hit in the right center field, but the right fielder, Perkins, headed it over, and he's got it for the out. So the Broncos out here in the sixth inning. Played five and a half, still one to nothing in favor of the Wildcats of Kokomo. Broncos have one more chance. Nine, one, and two coming up for the Wildcats of Kokomo. Again, I remind you, tomorrow Kokomo will be at Loeb Stadium. Game time, six o'clock. Broncos will take Thursday off, and then Friday we will host the Logan Sport Berries in a makeup game from last Wednesday. As the game was rained out. Short night on Friday. After Logan Sport game, as we get up, head down 231 to North Montgomery, 11 o'clock first pitch, 11 a.m. first pitch. You know, you looked at some of those, um, some of the rate rankings, some of the teams. Of course, a couple polls out there. PBR's got a poll and then the uh, UPI poll, but it's amazing how we played as many games as we had. Of course, we had an advantage going south, but mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing some of the games. Well, 
Kokomo as an example, they played two games. We we had played eight already, you know. Mm -hmm. So you look down through the, the ratings there and see how many games each, each one of them teams has played. It's kind of amazing. It is. How do you rank guy? How do you rank teams this early when there's such a disparity in the, the number of games played for each team? I mean, you can say all you want about talent, and on paper, Kokomo looks really good, but you still have to come out here between the white lines and play uh, play this great game. And it looks like they got the fireballer Jack Perkins out in the bullpen warming up to potentially come in to close it out. So here we go. Bottom of the sixth inning. Deshaun Barberry, number nine batter in the batting order, playing second base. Takes a ball outside, ball one. And there's ball two, and what we don't not want to happen is a base runner here for Kokomo. We want to leave the score right where it is at one to nothing. That is correct, sweet do. Cannot have a leadoff walk here. Line shot down the right field line, and that's out of play. That ball smoked. Got a little playground down down the right field line, and it's a couple got some grass area between that playground and the fence. Them kids better, better be paying attention. That ball about hit somebody. <laughs> Here's a pitch up high, three and one now. I think they have a netting over there to help protect some of it, but I don't think it's totally enclosed over there. Ferguson, three, one pitch. Here it is, and that's inside ball four. That's a, exactly what we did not want to have happen. Say that again. Chandler's second walk of the day. So a walk to the number nine batter in the batting order. Brings up the leadoff man, center fielder Nate Hemmerich. We'll see what Kokomo has in mind here. Pretty good lead at first base. Bun attempt. Ooh, that's just that's high. Really that looked pitch. like a pretty good pitch. And I yes, think Ferguson did. thought it was a good pitch. Wonder if Christian kind of jumped up and uh, blocked the umpire's vision there, but that looked like a pretty good pitch. So you're right on. I think you're right on with him jump uh, Ferguson jumping up and there. Close play at first base and Barberry back. But I think Christian jumped up and blocked the view of, of the home plate umpire. One ball, no strikes. Again, a bunt attempt. Potts has it at third. He Gets goes third to first base, base and oh, throws it boy. down the right field line. Siegel gets it, and they're going to hold up Barberry. So that's going to be an air all the way on Riley Potts. E5 puts runners on second and third. I mean, Riley did everything well on that, fielded it cleanly, and then just kind of threw a, threw a sinker over to Nick Ewell that Nick wasn't able to to handle, so now you're going to have runners on second and third with no outs, which are number two hitter up. The infield is drawn in. Gives the hitter a lot of holes to hit the ball through. Wind up in the pitch. There's a foul ball off to the right and out of play, and Chandler Ferguson will see what he's made of here. Absolutely. Second air committed by the Broncos in this game. Barberry on third, Hemmerich on second. No balls, one strike, nobody out. There's a check swing, and a home plate umpire said he went too far. This is when, as a pitcher, you got to have strikeouts. You can't have the ball put in play. Got to have strikeouts. Here's the wind up in the pitch, and that's down low for a ball. Muncie almost, uh, he was practice swinging there. And I thought he was going to get Sanders. Here's a pitch just outside the low, two and two. So, again, we're going to see what Chandler Ferguson's made up here. He's ready to go already, and Muncie's not even in the batter's box. Two and two count. Here it is. Ground ball, no. and that's at Potts. He's going to throw to first base. He is safe. Wow. That's one of those plays where it's a hard ground ball, a chopper, I should say, where Riley Potts at third base has to step back, and he fields it. 
And I think he threw, I think he had to be out there at first base. The umpire, he threw a one hopper, Nick Newell picks it, but the umpire said he's safe, he said he beat it. But what happens is now you have the bases loaded with, bases loaded with no outs. Um, so the infield fly rule will be in effect here. But you're sitting with the number three hitter, Noah Herlock, up, who's, who's over two with two strikeouts, but it's a tough, tough situation for the Broncos here. Well, they credit. Muncie with an infield single, bases loaded, swung on and missed by the number three batter in the batting order. Shortstop Noah Herlock. And Ferguson in a real jam here. No place to put anybody. Yes, he bases is. Bases loaded. Broncos trailing one to nothing here in the bottom of the sixth. Here's a ground ball foul. And Chandler ahead 0 and 2 to the number three batter in the batting order. Big opportunity here for Kokomo if they could get a base hit here and knock a couple in. But Broncos need to knuckle down here. Swung nice on and missed. Nice pitch by Ferguson. Now this is going to be the biggest at bat in the game right here. Jack Perkins has taken two really good swings off of Chandler. He's had a base hit in his first at bat. Line drive to the center fielder in his second at bat. But the situation, folks, is here we are in the bottom of the sixth. It's a one nothing game. Kokomo bases loaded with one out. Infield is still drawn in. Here's the windup of the pitch to swung on and missed. Mr. Perkins was trying to hit that flag out there <laughs> on the scoreboard with that swing. Yes, he Bases was. jammed here. Big Got too line much drive to play. as the infield was drawn too much in. To play. In the center field, Barberry comes in. Here comes Hemorrhage in, and it's now three to nothing. As Perkins, the right fielder, with a two RBI single into center field, Kokomo now leads three to nothing. Said Jack Perkins has been the one in the lineup that you don't want to see there, and like I said, he um, he's seeing the ball well. I think Chandler left the breaking ball middle in, and Jack did not miss it. Muncie moves over to third base on the throw. Runners on the corners, one out. Brings up pitcher Kyle Wade, the number five batter in the batting order. This inning's not over yet, but any kind of ground ball or ball and hit in the outfield can get another run for the Wildcats. Two runs in here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Kokomo leads three to nothing. Ferguson. Here's the pitch. Runner at second going. Swung on and missed. Throw down. Now they've got the runner, Muncie, throw at the plate. He is out of there. So tried to get a double steal, I think. Perkins did go ahead and round third base. So we're going to credit on the pitch. We're going to credit Perkins with a stolen base, and we're going to get Muncie out at home trying to steal. A 2-4-2 two, two put out, I think, that went. And then Perkins moved over to third base. Yes. One ball, one strike now on Wade. Two ball or three balls and one strike now. There are two outs here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Two runs in. Kokomo leading three to nothing. Ferguson from the windup. Here's the pitch. Oh. That's a wild one, and it bounces back. Wow. I guess that was ball four. So a lucky break there. Yes, it was. Kind of reminds me of that stadium we played in <laughs> down in Tennessee because we got – as the ball hit, hit the backstop here, we got a pinch runner. Or Wade, number or a courtesy runner, number one. We did get lucky there, Sweet Lou, as you called it. Um, what happened was the Chandler threw a, kind of a wild pitch, I mean, although it was ball four, but it hit off that backstop, which I don't know if it's padded. Like we can't tell from our angle, but can't imagine if it's padded. It's a really good pad because it came ricocheting right back to. 
to the catcher Christian Sanders, which allowed, which did not allow the run yeah. on third base to score. Yeah, that could have been run number four for Kokomo. So exactly. we got a break there. Puts on Perkins on third. Pinch runner Herlock on at first base. Two outs. Pitch inside for a ball as Chandler Ferguson has to go back to the stretch position. Baden Root trying to lean into that breaking ball there by Chandler Ferguson. There he swings and misses. One ball, one strike. Pretty good lead at first base by Herlock. Swing and a miss. Just blew that fastball right by Baden Root. Now Chandler's got a couple options. He can go with the breaking ball again. If he makes a quality pitch with the breaking ball, he can get him there. And I also think he can dial up that fastball again if he goes high and tight and throw it by Baden. But he, if he throws a breaking ball, he better he makes he needs to make sure he stays on top of it. One two pitch. Here it is. And There's he did. A line he drive. left it over Base the inside hit. part of the plate. Base hit in the left field. That's going to score Perkins with the third run of the inning, fourth run overall. That's now five hits now for the Wildcats of Kokomo. See, that's what I'm talking about. So when Chandler gets into trouble, that, that breaking ball, and it usually happens late in the game, it kind of flattens out and he leaves it over the middle of the plate. That was be that's the only pitch that Jack that uh, Baden Root is going to hit in that situation, and Chandler left it up there for him and he and he took care of it. Yeah, we've got another pinch runner. We've got a, a pinch runner now. It's number five running for Root at first base. Brian Harding now running at first base. So Herlock at second, Harding at first base, two outs, the number five batter, Perry McCollum, the left fielder, right-hander. Ferguson from the stretch position. Foul ball off to the right and out of play. McCollum's one for two on the days, single back in the third. And a strikeout looking in the fifth. Four to nothing. Kokomo on top here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Three runs in here in the bottom of the sixth. Now throw back to second. And Herlock back as Bowman tried to sneak in from second base. 0-1 pitch. Time called. At home plate. Took away a nice fastball strike from Ferguson <laughs> there, Sweet Lou. <laughs> now Ferguson ready for the 0-1. Here it is. Outside for a ball. Evens the count one and one. Two outs. Ferguson 2-0. Record-wise on the season, 1-1 one, one pitch, here it is. There's a line shot foul. It's out of the ballpark. Yeah, that ball's hit well, <laughs> just foul. He got a lot of good barrel on that pitch, but plenty foul. Well, as Chris mentioned, a lot of room here. Three, 330 down the left field line, 348 in the power alley, 400 dead center, 369 in the right power alley, and 330 down the right field line. Here's the pitch. That's high for a ball off the glove, and both runners are going to be able to move up. That's happening too much, we Lou. Well, going to be a, another pass ball. Ball just hitting the glove and then bounced out of Chandler or, uh, Sanders' glove. It did. Now both runners in scoring position. Ferguson 2-2 with two out. He can go from the windup now and does. Now a time again called. That's way too late. You cannot grant him time that late. He Absolutely. Was, he was well into his windup on that play, on that pitch. Two balls, two strikes. Foul ball to the right. Screen out of play. Callum, the number seven batter in Kokomo Wildcats batting order. 
Now Ferguson, here's the pitch. Again, looks like McCollum was reaching for that one. Just got a piece of it. It's a good battle. Good spoil there by Perry McCollum there. Chandler's working hard. Throws a really good breaking ball, really good 2-2 breaking ball. McCollum's able to foul it off and fight it off to live to fight another day. 2-2 count here. Runners on second, third with two outs. There's a pitch in there for cold strike three, and the inning is over. But the damage is done as Kokomo comes up with three runs. There was an error. Two runners left. And we head to the seventh inning, last chance for the Broncos as the Kokomo Wildcats lead by a score of four to nothing. So the Broncos had their work cut out. Two, three, and four hitters against Kyle Wade. Wade trying to go the distance here. Wade has looked really good in this game. Well, the old saying, it's never over till it's over. It's not, not impossible here, but the Broncos got, got their work cut out for them. Yes, they do. Bullpens are quiet. Jalen Williams, or JT we call him be the first batter. We do need a base runner here to get something started. You're not going to one thing for sure, Chris, you're not going to get it all four runs on one swing. You're going to have to go station to station. Very well said, Sweet Lou. You have to get up there and see some pitches, make way, throw strikes, but he hadn't had a problem throwing strikes today. So, you got to find some base runner some kind of way and see if we can get a, a late rally here. Now the Broncos on their last inning here, three three outs, but not impossible, trailing four to nothing. Four runs, five hits, no errors for Kokomo. No runs, two hits, and two errors for Jeff. Williams, ready to face Kyle Wade. He winds and delivers. The pitch up high for a ball. Ball one. JT sees a fastball high. Find a way to get on base here. Foul ball off the end of the bat. Kind of surprised he's swinging there, but. I think you need to check that ball. Hit that off the end of the bat. There's no way you can allow that ball to be thrown. Stayed in the game. You got to throw that to the catcher. The umpire at least has to take a look at it. I don't yep. know. I didn't see if the first base umpire looked at it, but yep. if I'm a hitter, I'm asking. I'm demanding. Take a look at that baseball. One ball, one strike. Swung on and missed. Of course, they had a – watching the my Twitter account today, and they had a question come up. How long is the life of a major league baseball? <laughs> Not very. <laughs> <laughs> one ball, two strikes. Foul ball over our heads to the right now to play. JT battled there. Went down low to get a fastball to fight it off in foul territory. 1-2 count. Top of seven. Broncos down four zip. 1-2 pitch. Ground ball. It's going to be a tough play. Third baseman Muncie over nice to first. Job. Or the first out. And I've said it for Jeff, and I'll, but I'll say it here just to be realistic. To get that first out of an inning is a, makes a whole lot of difference. Yes, it does. Number three batter, Clay Bowman for the Broncos. One out here in the top of the seventh inning. There's a cold strike on the outside. Man, Wade is just really sharp here, really sharp. Winds and delivers. Line shot into center field for a base hit. And that'll be the third hit now for the Broncos. And they do have a base runner. Well, that's a good start, Clay. We'll take it. 
So one out, Clay Bowman on at first base. Now to bring up Chandler Ferguson. Chandler has one of the hits today, hit a ball in the hole of shortstop. Short left. Kamel Belt was not able to pick the ball out of dirt. So Chandler, and he gave Chandler a hit. He Chandler to sting one here. It's a Good line job. drive in the hole in the left field for a base hit. So the Broncos, two consecutive singles, one to center, one to left. We have Ducks on the pond here. Brings up Riley Potts. That's one situation again. Kyle Wade left the breaking ball up, up and in, and Chandler didn't miss it. Drives it hard, a line drive in between short and sec, uh, sh shortstop and the third baseman. Two men on here in the top of the seventh with one out. Pitch coach mm -hmm. for uh, Kokomo out to have a word with his infield, and now he's pitcher here. He's headed back to the dugout. Riley Potts steps into the batter's box. Now Kyle Wade's winning a new baseball. We've got Bowman on at second. Ferguson on at first base. One out here in the top of the seventh. Ferguson not being held on. There's a line drive, and that caught. Oh, it right. dropped. He, he dropped. Oh, man, this is going to be a double play. That, that's going to be maybe a double play. This game's going to be over. Someone's going to be out. I don't know who's. The umpires are confused. Line drive hit the Jack Perkins. I, the umpires are completely confused here, and so am I. Line drive hit the Jack Perkins. I'm not sure if he caught it or dropped it. But because it was hit so hard and on a line, there is absolute confusion here. We have two runners standing on second base. Yeah, there is mass confusion. The umpires are talking. The base umpires said the game's over, a double play. <laughs> now here comes Coach McTaggart. <laughs> and, I don't uh, know how we're going to score this, Sweet Lou, but that, that's a tough call by the umpire. I don't, I don't know what's what either. Now there is some discussion. So it's not going to be the end of the ball game. No. I, guess I don't not. know how that's not going to be a double play because. Well, the base, that, what, second the, base is still Bowman's. But are they, the, the first thing is we have to know if that line drive was called a catch or not. Right. By Jack Perkins in right field. This is mass chaos. Well, we've got, we still got. We still don't know if that wasn't, was he called? We've still got Bowman on at second. So they're saying Riley Potts is saving first. So what do you, do you give him? It's going to be an, I guess an E9. And I then, so, and Riley then Potts is. Or, I mean, Bowman's still on at second. Right. And they've called Ferguson out. So, Ferguson was so the, out at first. Ferguson was out on the first, first play at, at second base. Gotcha. So, we've got, an e, what do you want to, they haven't mean, put an E up there. Well, I don't think they. So, they, they gave, looks like they gave. Uh, Potts a hit. Potts a hit. They gave okay. him Potts a hit. So, he's got a hit to right field. Okay. We've got <laughs> Ferguson. <laughs> Is out. The nine six put out for the second out. He's out on the last play, and Bowman. Bowman is on at still back on at second base. He did not advance. So right. a wild scenario there, but I think it was the right call because it all depended, like you said, on the where that was a catch or not, and you you said it. Well, Jay Siegel swings and misses, and he's in a hole now, 0-2. Bowman on at second, Potts on at first. But as I was getting ready to say was, you called it, it was dropped by the right fielder. Mm -hmm. So the base at second is still Bowman's until he advances to third base, even though Ferguson came in, and Ferguson 
was just dead to right. Yeah, I mean, well, he had no, he had no, nothing he can do. no other base he could go to. No, there's so. there's absolutely nothing you can do on that. That ball smoked. Jack Perkins comes in, makes a sliding attempt, and kind of hits in his glove and then bounces out. And so that, you know, that confusion there just throws everyone off. No balls and two strikes to Jay Siegel. Two outs, last chance here for the Broncos. Kyle Wade. Swings and misses, and the game is officially over now. Final score, the Kokomo Wildcats defeat the Lafayette Jeff Broncos here in a North Central Conference match number of number one pitchers. Kokomo, four runs on five hits. There were no errors. Broncos, no runs, four hits, and two errors. Winning pitcher was Kyle Wade for Kokomo. Losing pitcher going down to his first defeat of the season is uh, Chandler Ferguson. And these two teams will match up again tomorrow at Loeb Stadium. Let's see if we can uh, square things away here. But the Broncos 0-2 in the North Central Conference now as they lost to Logan Sport last week at Logan Sport 2-0 and now Lose to Kokomo by a score of four to nothing, and Chris, there were were some opportunities, but uh, we just didn't take advantage of. Some final thoughts. Yeah, just a really good pitchers duel there. Um, defense, we had two errors, two tough plays. They proved to be costly, um, but you know both pitchers threw the ball well. We have to find a way um, to, you know, it, I, I'll say it this way: it's not going to get any easier because I'm telling you, as good as Kyle Wade was today. The arms that we'll face tomorrow, there will be better arms tomorrow. And so we're going to have to find a way to, to, to try to scratch some runs and some hits across if, if we want to be successful. Well, thanks for being here. I know you had a uh, busy travel schedule, Chris, so I appreciate you being here helping me out. Again, the final score, Kokomo Wildcats 4 and the Lafayette Jeff Broncos 0. I want to thank the administration here at Kokomo High School, their athletic director. Again, tomorrow, game time, 6 o'clock from Loeb Stadium. Don't forget the archives, everyone. Thanks a lot for watching. So long, everyone.